Ladies and gentlemen, Atari has invaded the building here at Joe's Video Games. We have in the legendary Tempest. This was Atari's first color vector arcade game. And as you can see, this is the cabaret version. So we'll go over that in a second. But We like to videotape cool games we get in. And does it get much cooler than Tempest? I mean... That's pretty awesome. Look, it's so cool. The people outside are slowing down to look. Do you see that? Anyway, this is Atari's Tempest. And this is the cabaret uh, version. Like I said, it was their first uh, color vector game. And it's working pretty good. What a sweet game. Atari released games three different ways, usually. Like this one, they released three different ways. There was the upright version with all the side art, like a you know a more traditional style arcade game that you've seen, you know, and maybe the ones that you remember the most. And then there were the sit down games with the glass top. They called those Pizza Hut cabinets. A lot of people called them, but uh, the official name for them was a cocktail cabinet. I guess so you could set a cocktail on it, right? <laughs> and then these were the cabaret versions. You know, cabaret is just an old word for bar. So, <laughs> these were made for places like bars. They don't take up quite as much room. Um, it's probably only maybe five feet tall or a little less than five feet tall. And the sides, as you can see, are wood grain. This came out in 1980. In 1980, wood grain was classy, folks. I mean, that was, you know, especially for a bar, right? Fit right in. And they didn't want anything loud with a bunch of... Uh, crazy graphics on the side so they just wanted wood grain make it look more like furniture but yet it made money proven by the coin door down there. <laughs> right there so anyway so they were set up a little bit different than the upright but the the board inside is exactly the same so the game plays exactly the same and Atari's cabaret versions actually had the same size monitor so they were 19 inch monitors that looked exactly the same so um, it was just like having the upright, just the cabinet was a little smaller. So I'll show you. the Atari had this habit, too, of putting these stickers on the front. I don't know why they didn't put them on the back, but they put these stickers on the front of the machine with the serial number and everything on it. So this is number 1347. These cabarets, they usually didn't make as many of. I don't know how many Tempest cabarets they made, but the marquee was right there with a light behind it looks really cool and then Atari always gave you like over-the-top graphics so you know if the thing wasn't turned on you would think that it was gonna look like that when you played it but it really looked like that <laughs> which is still cool but you know you have to use your imagination to get there with it Tempest It says 1980 copyright on the screen, but I think they all came out in 1981. And these are Atari's volcano start buttons or cone buttons, they called them. It's on free play, which is why it's blinking. Um, if you put a, um, if you walked up to it, I believe they would both be, if I remember correctly, they're both on. Um, and then whenever you drop a quarter in, only the first one comes on or something like that. I can't remember. Maybe the first one starts blinking. And then if you drop a second quarter, they both start blinking. Or if it's in free play, they both just standard continuously blink like that. And so it's really simple controls. You had a spinner. One of the coolest controls ever. Check this out. And they don't work as good if they don't make that little winding noise, right? <laughs> and then, of course, a fire button and the super zapper very important so you're scoring here foosball fuseball 250 500 700 points zips up and down the line the pulsars 200 points pulsate adjacent lines very dangerous those pulsars the flippers that's the ones that you're used to you see those all the time the tankers 100 points splits into two flippers whenever you hit it and then the spiker 50 points it builds a green spike which the player must shoot away 
All right, instructions. Insert coin. Push one or two player select. Whatever's flashing, right? Pick the difficulty of your starting surface with the rotary control, then push fire to start the game. Win bonus points if you survive the chosen surface. It's an interesting way of putting it. Calling it a surface. Which I guess it is. You walk around the surface. Shoot the approaching enemy and enemy charges. Player loses a life when he's either caught by an enemy, which is usually the flippers, hit by a charge, or skewered by a spike, which usually happens whenever you're going from one uh, surface to another. And then they give you, they're kind enough to give you some hints to make your quarter last a little bit longer. Because Atari was always thinking about you. Hold the fire button down for continuous fire. Use the super zapper to zap all enemies on the tube. You'll get one super zap per tube. Avoid spikes when you zoom down the tube. Kill enemies at the top by shooting at the enemy as it flips. Firing into a long enemy spikes for best machine gun effect, which will kill enemies flipping towards you. Kill pulsar by shooting at it when it is not pulsing. Pulsing lines kill. Kill fuse ball by shooting as shooting at it, shooting it as it crosses between the lines. Touching a fuse ball is fatal. So there you go. Now the thing about this um, is it was Atari's first game to use a color vector monitor. And so they had, there were two types of monitors. There were raster monitors, which is like your television, or the older televisions with the CRT tube in it. And the way they worked was they would draw the whole screen in a big square, dot by dot, starting from the top. And they'd go all the way across, and then they'd draw the next line, and all the way across, and they'd draw the next line. And it'd do that 15,000 times a second, so quick you couldn't even see it, right? And uh, that's why whenever you videotape it, though, you'll see kind of lines rolling through the screen. The camera's picking up on it. But on these, it's a vector monitor, uh, which they, uh, they called a uh, uh, XY monitor. And basically what it does is the game board tells it to draw a line from this position to this position. And so uh, because of that, um, it doesn't scan everything in like that. It just draws lines. And so it can draw these really crisp cool looking diagonal jagged lines and they're not really jagged if you see them in person they're they're real straight but on the camera it does look jagged but uh it's just a it's a look that you just can't get um on a raster monitor it just doesn't look the same so uh they're really bright whenever things explode it's just pretty cool so but they only made a few color vector monitors the the monitors at the time weren't that reliable um so they eventually uh, figured out years later how to make them more reliable but at the time they would burn up these little uh, uh, transistors that are on the the monitor chassis and they cost like fifty dollars a piece back then and if you didn't know what you were doing and it burnt up one of those transistors you would replace it turn the monitor back on and it just burn it up again <laughs> immediately it'll burn it up as soon as it's plugged in because something else is shorted well, years later, everybody figures out, oh, well, that's no big deal. If you do this and this, it makes them really reliable. And now those little transistors cost $3, so it's no big deal. But back then, the operators just hated it. So a lot of these games were just shelved. I mean, <laughs> they started, they'd put, they'd put four new transistors in it. They'd blow all four of them as soon as they turned it on. They went 200 bucks, and this, the game's still not working. So they would part them out, turn them off, put them, store them in the in the room, you know, in the warehouse, even if they, even if uh, uh, they got them working again, they'd take them off location because they just, you know, they'd rather turn it into a game with a raster monitor in it, so. But to people that collect the games, these were the coolest ones, man. I mean, everybody wants the color vectors. So some of the games, uh, Atari followed this up. I don't know if it was the next game or if it was a couple years later, but they followed it up with the Star Wars arcade game and it, it also had a color vector monitor it was just awesome so but this is tempest there's was, this was their first one and now other companies had uh color vector games too but this was atari's first so we just thought we'd film a little bit of it i'll i'll go get the tripod and then we'll uh we'll shoot a little video of the gameplay see you in a few all right folks we are back with the tempest i'll show you the gameplay a little bit Again, it's a vector monitor, so it's different than most of the other monitors uh, that are out there. So it, it's kind of hard to get a good tape of. 
or a good uh, video of, I should say. <laughs> like how the lines look jagged there. They don't look like that in person. They're real straight. Just kind of weird, but that's how it is. Um, and if you haven't seen one of these in person, they don't look anything like a TV looks. They're just, uh, it's just weird. They just draw lines and it's just, it looks different than anything you've ever seen. So uh, you got to check one out. If you're near us and we've still got it, stop by here. You can check this one out. So, But I'm going to start the game off. We'll play a couple uh, a couple levels. I'm not very good at, at Tempest, but I'll play through a couple just so you can see the gameplay. Basically, you've got a spinner, a fire button, and the super zapper for whenever things get really rough, and you just got to get out of there. So <laughs> I turned the audio up so you can hear less of me and more of the awesome Atari-ness uh, that, from 1980. So here we go. Novice, I better start there. Spikes coming up. super zapper so that they wouldn't get me walking around the edge like they just did. Oh, it's getting tough, folks. You can shoot it enough that it'll disappear. Oh man, not good. All right, that's that. Oh, they're gonna let me put my initials in. I guess I'm the best ever on this machine, actually, if you look. I mean, I knew I was good, but I didn't know I was that good. There we go. Anyway, that's a little bit of Tempest if you haven't played it in a while. It was released on a few uh, home systems, the original one like this. 
but uh, not with a vector monitor, you know. So uh, these are pretty desirable. And we figured we'd videotape one whenever we got in, especially since it's this cool cabaret version. But uh, if you want to check out the other games we've got available right now, go to lionsarcade.com. Um, or you can stop by our shop. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's about 15 minutes south of Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, we've got a showroom here, and, and uh, we, uh, we buy games that are uh, usually not working, and we fix them up. The guy in the attract mode's better at the game than I am. What's up with that? But anyway, we, uh, we fix them up and get them working. And then we usually sell them to people for their home game rooms, but some of them people put out on location still. Uh, you know, we sold to barcades and stuff like that. We sold to doctor's offices and um, skating rinks and all kinds of places. So if, uh, if you're looking for something, check out our website. Or if not, just enjoy the videos. If you subscribe to our uh, channel, we'll be putting up all kinds of videos if it's something we haven't shot before and it's a decent game, uh, we'll take a video of it so you can see it and uh, remember remember what things were like uh, back whenever these were all over the place. So, all right, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.